So this weekend, I had a little tiny mold polishing project where I needed to paper finish this pocket on these inserts, and I needed to hold this sharp corner and not round it over. So traditionally, you machine up a piece of material real quick, and then you can go in with your weapon of choice and not have to worry about rounding over that corner because the material and the insert are the same height. Alternatively, you can also take a second insert, butt them together, and go across this way and not have that concern either. But I thought this would be kind of a fun opportunity to look at 3D printing and how we could use that. And so if you have a part shape like this, which is a conical section with three lands, it could be really challenging to find a piece of material to butt up against. So it's very cost effective to print something, and then you can just go to town and not have to worry about rounding those corners. Now, admittedly, this isn't a particular part shape I see much, but it does illustrate how effective this could be. The only concern you have to have is uh, grit can embed in the plastic. So print uh, several of these, and then as you change grits, as you're going up in your finish, just discard it. And then you don't have to worry about grit contamination. So I also wanted to look at a way to do something I do see a lot of, which is large radii. Uh, I see a lot of like sections of circles uh, on draw punches, and they could be challenging to both mill and get a finish like this on. And then I also see the occasional pocket knife scale with a very large radius, and I wanted to figure out a way to make a lap that was convex to the same radii that I could polish these quickly with. And I, I think I found an acceptable way using a two-piece 3D print, one of which is a loaderometer material that you then set on the uh, material you want to lap and you pour pitch in and then you remove the loaderometer part and then you have your your pitch lap ready to go. So we'll look at that. Uh, but before we get into any of that we have to mill all these samples and I wanted to talk briefly about 3D contour milling and surface finish and what works for mold polishing or dye polishing. So oftentimes when we talk about surface finish and ball milling, you see this 2D diagram. Unfortunately, it's a three-dimensional world. So you'll have your ball mill and some form of a step over and the radius and the step over form a cusp height. And that in turn forms your surface finish. That's surface finish going this way, but unfortunately we have another dimension we're, we're concerned with. So when we are milling apart, we're also producing surface finish this way. So our ball mill is taking these steps, and as it's going along its path, it's scooping out little pockets. Like an egg carton, this is kind of a good representation of what it would look like. You know, you have your little scallops on an even spacing. So this might be your step over. And then this way would be your, your feed per tooth. Uh, so ideally, I was always taught, whatever your step over is, your feed per tooth should match. And what that gives you is a very even distribution of points. And it breaks up any form of a pattern. It doesn't look like there's lines. It just looks like a, an even reflective finish when it's e uh, uh, matched step over and feed, feed per tooth. So if you were to go to a smaller feed per tooth than your step over, what happens is the ridge line from the step over really starts to show up. So uh, that doesn't really get you a better surface finish either. Your surface finish is still controlled by your step over. Uh, it just now has more of a lined appearance. So you didn't really do anything other than raise the cycle time by doing that. Um, and then alternatively, uh, let's say you made a mold pass where your feed per tooth was smaller or larger than your step over. Uh, 
and that just kind of creates the same problem but the other way. Now you see a lined pattern going this direction. Uh, so if you keep them matching, not only does it look the best, but it also tends to be your most economical cycle time. So we're going to take a look at the machining and then we'll get into the, the polishing or, or the printing to go with the polishing. I didn't film a ton with the polishing simply because it's such a filthy, nasty process and I'm not really that great at it. So uh, I just wanted to show you the 3D printing elements and uh, how, how they might be useful for your finishing. So we're starting out with the large uh, kind of radius uh, lens looking deal and we're roughing it with a six millimeter feed mill and then we'll semi finish with that same tool. Now we've moved on to the finish milling. For this we're using a three millimeter uh, ball mill and it's going 120 inches a minute which works out to uh, two thou eight tenths uh, feed per tooth. And now we're doing the kind of uh, uh, conical segment and uh, same feed rate, same same parameters. This is the model of the part we'll be cutting. Uh, so in the middle section, I have it programmed it at the uh, 2008 tenths feed rate and 2008 tenths step over. And those are our ideal parameters for the surface finish I want to hit. So on the right land, I've cut the step over in half at to 1,004 tenths, but the feed per tooth is still 2,008 tenths. So half the step over of the center one. And on the far left, it's the same step over, 2,008 tenths, but I've slowed the feed rate down to one thou four tenths, so half the feed of our ideal toolpath. And the end result you'll see is that all three lands look about the same, but the leftmost one will take the most effort to polish, and the left and right will both take about twice as long to cut as the center. It really illustrates how good of a concept it is to use matched step over and feed per tooth. So give that a shot next time you're surfacing. And this is the uh, the rightmost land getting cut with the smaller step over. So there's the finished product and you can see they really don't look all that different. Uh, this is under the microscope. This is the uh, fine feed per tooth wide step over and you could see some lines running left to right. This is the middlemost land with matched feed per tooth match stepped over and it looks like pretty even scallops. One slightly bigger than the other which indicates maybe a tiny bit of tool run out and this is the rightmost land with a uh, smaller half size step over but same feed per tooth. And you can see one of the scallops is a little smaller than the other and they're a little more smashed together. So now we're on to the knife handle that we're prepping for polishing. And uh, just getting this roughed out with a that same six millimeter ball nose just going a lot slower. And I'm also running flood oil. Now we're doing the parallel finish pass on the face. I haven't messed with titanium for surfacing much, so this was a little weird. A lot of the knife parts I do are tool steel. So this is an example of the uh, polishing guide, or the the edge protector. You can you can stone pretty aggressively right to the edge. I, I stone in like a V format, and then when I go up to the next grit, I'll stone 90 degrees opposite. You know, So say I'm kind of making a line front to back, the next grit up I would go side to side. Same same V format though, that keeps you from digging in. So the thing I found that helped me a lot when stoning, it took me a long time to get okay at it, was not to put too much pressure on the stone. So this is our 
our large radius and then this is my concept for polishing we have a, a low delimiter, uh kind of a web that's going to form the flutes in our our lap we'll mount it on the the part and we'll hit it with some mold release and then this is just like a handle but it also has some uh lugs in it for the molten uh pitch to stick to so the uh the pitch is technically a liquid it looks rock hard but uh you have to heat it up and then you can pour it in and then you can start lapping so this is the pitch getting poured in and uh yeah i waited about an hour for it to i would say freeze but it it, it still is technically a liquid when it's uh in its its room temperature state and that's what makes it so useful um here we are doing a, a rough lap just getting the the remaining feed lines off you could see on the knife handle uh there's like some steps some elevation and that's that's from the smoothing settings uh i didn't think to change it but fusion has a max radius uh, set to 1,000 millimeters or one meter, and the radius on that handle was bigger than that, so it broke it into line segments instead of arcs. Quick fix, but it was too late by the time I caught it, and it polished right out. So I, I lap on the large part, and then I just do a few strokes on the knife because I don't want to distort the form of the lap too much. So this is another concept I had for a pitch lap. I 3D printed one, and I'm just getting a little bit of pitch to stick to the bottom. And I didn't put enough in my tray first try, but this is a this is me just trial and erroring, trying to learn new ways to do things. But if I had a, you know another another few drops of pitch in there, it would have evenly coated the bottom of that. And uh, when it froze, the the goal was to have the the pitch grooves, the lap grooves, already be there. So I started over, added some more pitch, and then that's my end result. So once that, that solidifies some, I'll clean the rough ground or rough lapped uh, part, and then I'll just set the, uh, set the uh, pitch lap on it and then add some weight. And so it'll actually kind of deform to the surface of the part given enough time, and that's how an inaccurate... 3D printing can get the right form on it. So I uh, I used a a diamond slurry, but I was also curious to try diamond compound because that's something I have more of on hand. Uh, I, I always need diamond compound, and so I wanted to see how it perform. So put some thinner on. This is eight thousand grit. I will say pushing it around it it felt effective you could you could feel uh, a cutting action through the the handle so I, I was pretty pleased with it and uh, I feel like the finish came in pretty quick and I think the end result was pretty good so this was just kind of me playing around trying to figure out some new ways I as a die maker see a lot of dome segments on the end of punches and I, I like the idea of having a fast flexible way of creating a lap to get a really nice finish on them so i wanted to play with this and see what shook out so i i think this could be useful outside of tool making like the knife was just one example but any luxury consumer good i think could do well with this watches or you know anything people are putting a lot of care and attention into these days i think would uh, make a compelling argument to be finish this way so play around with it let me know what you think